Greetings, adventurers. This is DM Kurt, and this is a retake of a previous video that I decided to scrub because I had a uh, little technical error in it, which was thankfully pointed out by uh, one of my followers. So, what we have is a DM that I know whose two players are kind of into cheesing the rules. One of them comes from uh, Pathfinder slash 3.5 and he's coming in a fifth and the one fellow is really pushing for his brother cousin whatever it is to be allowed to borrow money from the party to buy a sort of sharpness okay hey if the party's good for that cool it'll be really awesome for the ranger to get a sort of sharpness so he's going to be purchasing that. He's also going to be picking up the spell uh, Steel Wind Strike, which is 5th level. And yes, this ranger has been played from level 1 through 17. So I expect shenanigans. So the spell Steel Wind Strike, let's read it out of Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Casting time one action, fifth level conjuration spell, range 30 feet. Components, somatic material, a melee weapon with a, worth at least one silver piece. That's going to be important in here. Duration instantaneous. You flourish the weapon used in the casting, which is, could be a dagger, could be a sword of sharpness, whatever. Anywhere in between, two-handed weapon, uh, whatever. Choose up to five creatures you can see within range of 30 feet of you. Make a melee spell attack against each target. On a hit, the target takes 6d10 force damage. Now 6d10, you're looking at minimum 6, maximum 60. So you're looking at an average of about 33-ish, 36-ish, whatever. You can then teleport to an unoccupied space you can see within 5 feet of one of the targets you hit or missed. So... You just go, you pull out your sword, then whoosh, you know, within a blink of an eye, up to five targets are slashed for force damage. Note, it's not slashing damage, it is force damage. Magical in nature. It is a spell attack, not a melee weapon attack. It's a specifically melee spell attack. Now... First of all, components. A melee weapon worth at least one silver piece. It, that means a couple of things. It is not stated that the melee weapon worth at least one silver piece is consumed in the casting. Because sometimes there will be spells where you need a gem worth 5,000 gold, which is consumed upon the casting. I believe that's uh, when you raise dead type spells. So... There'll be examples like that where you have to really outlay materials. There's also uh, things with material components that don't have a gold piece cost or silver piece cost. Material components without a monetary cost can be just kind of hand waved if you have a spell focus or a uh, component bag. You just kind of don't worry about that. But this does require a blade. And the cheesing that I expect out of this is that they're going to say, okay, I'm going to cast Steel Wind Strike, and I'm going to use my Sword of Sharpness. Okay, we're good so far. So when I make my melee spell attack, it's a melee attack, and I also, so I get to add my Strength bonus and the, magic, the magical uh, bonus of the sword and my Proficiency bonus to it, right? No, you do not. It is a spell attack, and you get the bonuses for a spell attack, which are already your proficiency bonus and your wisdom bonus in this case, because it is a ranger who's casting. You don't get to also add your proficiency bonus again and your strength bonus on top of it. You, you generally don't get two attribute bonuses added on top of each other for any particular role. That's just not the way it works. And you're not going to get the sword's damage and the sword's 
uh, ability to lop off limbs from a sort of sharpness added on to the force damage. It says specifically it does 60 10 force damage. It does not add the damage of a weapon anywhere in that. That's the sort of cheesing I'm expecting. So, some players tend to make mistakes. Most players tend to make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes at some time. But there are certain players who only make mistakes when those mistakes are in their favor. And that's something you end up having to watch out for as a DM. Don't get mad at people who make mistakes or don't know their characters. But if they've been playing these characters for several years, they should know what they're doing by now. And you shouldn't be facing that sort of shenanigans. So, while the uh, example was a random 5th level spell out of Xanathar's Guide, it doesn't matter what the particular spell is. The caster is responsible for knowing what they're casting. If they are new to the game, we accept that. But if they're experienced, then they should know better. And you may have to look out for that sort of thing. These are power gamers slash metagamers. And they're, they're a fact of the game. Dame Kurt, out.